Heavenly Father, I pray for a special endowment of power from up on high, for I cannot minister to your people without the anointing, for the anointing breaks the yoke. Father, I ask you to open the blind eyes and the deaf ears to the word of, word of God. I ask you to let only the words of Jesus come through these lips, the words of the Holy Spirit to set the captives free, to open their blind eyes and to, to open their blind ears to the word of God. I bind Satan. I bind a strong man of, of any hindrances or obscuring spirits that would try to block the word of God, and I assign the warring angels as a protective hedge against any onslaught of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. You know, we go... We may turn on the radio and hear a little bit of, of a Christian message, or we may go to a church and we hear a little bit of Christian message, and they're talking about revival, or we're talking about renewal, or they're talking about uh, <clears throat> uh, passing out tracts, or they're talking out all kinds of these things. And when in reality, the, 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 the quickest point between point A and B is a straight line, isn't it? Okay. <clears throat> Quite frankly, the body of Christ today does not recognize the enemy. They do not recognize the enemy. They wonder why people are not saved. They wonder why we walk around in darkness. It's because we have an enemy out there. We have an enemy. My purpose this evening and this message this evening is to expose the enemy, not to exalt him, but to expose him for what he is. First of all, how many of you know and realize that God is a spirit? We all know that. God is a spirit. He is a spiritual being, and yet he created the heavens and the earth. He created everything around us, including us and our children and everything else, right? He created the birds and the bees. He is our creator. And yet... We, as human beings, live in the natural. Now, <clears throat> if a spiritual being, God, created us, which is more real? It is the things of the spirit, is it not? It is the spiritual realm. So what I'm going to be doing these next six or seven weeks, however the time works out here, is I'm going to be opening your eyes to the spiritual realm. I'm going to do it in a teaching manner, and I'm going to do it as, as, as methodically as I can. It's very important that you keep track of the scriptures. I will also, of course, be making tapes. Now, <clears throat> the Word of God is truth. It is the only truth. <clears throat> the Word of God, pay attention now, is our, if you like, window into the unseen spiritual realm. Now, what do I mean by that? That means when you read the Word of God, although you may not think in your mind, well, that's quite not understand that, that is the truth. That is the only truth. That is the way it is. There is no other truth. Everything else that may come to try to come against that is, is a deceit or a lie from the enemy's camp. The Word of God is our final authority. It's not what we think or what we believe. It is God's word that is the final authority. A lot of the problems that the churches have in this day and age has is, is become from, from denominational uh, uh, theories and denominational reasonings rather than the word of God. But the word of God is the final authority. It is the truth. It is the only truth, and it's the only thing that sets people free. Hallelujah. So when we read God's will, or God's word, we see from God's perspective, because God Almighty is the one who wrote it, right? Because God is a spiritual being, and we have a spiritual being in us, the Holy Spirit, this book was written by, inspired by the Holy Spirit, to a spirit, from a spirit. You still with me? So natural carnal minds do not understand the word of God. So when you meet John Doe on the street here and he says, well, you know, I used to try to read that Bible, but I don't understand it. That's because he's not born again. He'll never understand it. And he won't understand it because it's written to his spirit man. 
You see, that spirit man is not, uh, doesn't even come alive until he's born again. Now, <clears throat> now that you recognize there is a spiritual realm, <clears throat> we have an enemy. We have an adversary, and he is the one that takes our loved ones and holds them captive. But God has given us a strategy to set the captives free. If you would turn with me, please, to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. <clears throat> Beginning in verse 10, the Word of God says, Finally, my brethren, this is Paul talking, Paul the Apostle, and he says, Finally, my brethren, who's he talking to? He's talking to us. He's talking to the brothers in the church, the brothers in Christ. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So first of all, he's telling us to be strong in the spirit. He's talking to the brothers in the spiritual realm, us. Brothers, because of our spirit. Okay, in the, and be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, verse 11 says, put on the whole armor. Whole armor. What does that mean? All of it. All of it. When I was, was, when I was ministering in America, I would walk into a, a, a pastor's office and I would actually, in the spirit realm, I would actually see all this armor lying in the corner. Armor. And I asked the Holy Spirit, I said, what is this? And he says, well, these people in this congregation, all they got on is the helmet of salvation, and they keep coming into the pastors, and he's not telling them about how to put on their armor, so he just lays in the corner. Because you see, what's going on here is there are denominations that all they've done and all the farther they have gone is the, is the helmet of salvation. There are other denominations that have nothing but the shield of faith. You understand? You see? But the Word of God plainly says, put on the whole armor, put on it all. And it says, and, 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 why? Well, the word wiles here in the Greek means because there are strategies. The very word wiles means strategies. Strategies of who? Of the enemy. He has strategies. He has strategies. So, <clears throat> verse 11 says, put on the whole armor. In other words, put on, on all of it that you may be able to stand because if you don't stand, you're, he's going to knock you down. Against what? His strategies, the wiles of the devil, which is in the Greek is strategies, against his strategies. Now, verse 12, get this. <clears throat> For we wrestle not, we wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood. We don't wrestle against people. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We do not wrestle against people. But what? Against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. My dear people, we are involved in a spiritual war. You say, well, I don't want to go to war. My dear people, when you're born again out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, you're in the war. You are drafted. You are drafted. <clears throat> so we have an adversary, and this adversary, as you'll find out as we go on here, is a liar, and he is a deceiver, and that's how he works, through deceit. He deceives. He deceives. And uh, First Peter here, chapter 5, verse 8, the Word of God says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary... Who's adversary? He says, your. Who's he talking to here? He's talking to the brothers in Christ. He says, your adversary... Who? The devil. As a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So he's walking around as your adversary, as a roaring lion, seeking who he walketh about. What does a roaring lion do? He generates fear. He roars, doesn't he? He generates fear. Fear comes in and captivates you. It paralyzes you. So Paul here is talking about, in, in Ephesians 6, 12, first of all, he's making it very clear that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but, but, but uh, spiritual... Uh, beings in high places, in other words, we don't wrestle with people. And he just is explicit in, in 1 Peter 5, 8. <clears throat> I'm here to tell you that devil, uh, that devil has no teeth, does he? 
So, <clears throat> you know, Paul, the apostle, if you read about him, he was stoned, he was beat up, he was left for dead, he's put in prison, you name it. And yet, he recognized that the enemy was not the people around him. No more than it is the people around us. Nor is it circumstances, nor, as a lot of people think, is it God. God is not our enemy. He's our Father. These forces that come against us are unseen. They are unseen. That's the reason the Word of God says, walk by faith and not by sight. It is a fact that the enemy has used for centuries and centuries and centuries to convince people that he doesn't even really exist. <clears throat> He's a liar. He's a deceiver. <clears throat> to give you an example, we just have been watching Saddam Hussein in Iraq. Have you noticed how he tried his strategies? It's all been based on deceit, isn't it? Deceive, deceive, deceive. Now, when this dictator, Saddam Hussein, rose up, that's a dictator, that's evil. He's been controlled by, which I'll show you here in a little bit, he's been being controlled by the Prince of Persia, which is a spiritual hierarchy. He's being controlled by that Prince of Persia, and because of that, he thinks he can't lose. Why? Because that Prince of Persia is lying to him, saying, hey, you're a winner, <laughs> you're a winner, you're a winner, you're a winner, you're not going to lose. Okay? If the Allies had not gone to war, he would have kept right on taking land. Right? What does the enemy do in our lives? He tries to take our land. He tries to take our family. He tries to take our finances. The same way. Now, if the Allies did not go in there and to enforce the law of the land to stop him, what would have happened? He would have continued to take the land, right? Okay. <clears throat> now you know why there's so much darkness around here. You see? We, as the children of God, have been called out of darkness into his marvelous light to enforce the word of God upon the earth. And quite frankly, my dear people, we have not done the job. I'm going to show you why and how to do this. Most Christians rarely give thought to his existence. A lot of people don't even believe there is a devil. How many of you think there's a devil? I've had people say, well, there ain't no devil. I don't even believe it. If there's no devil, let me ask you this. Why are you a Christian? Why are you a Christian? What are you afraid of? You see? Because you know down deep in your spirit, hey, he's real. God is real. <clears throat> so you see, we have been pulled out of that darkness into his marvelous light. But it is not, it is not to go out here and tiptoe through the tulips. Saying, oh, how lovely Jesus is. You understand? We're called out. God has to use our body. He has to use us. You think I'd come all the way across the Atlantic Ocean to fight this war all by myself? Nope. Nope. You can't win by yourself. No more than a, than a one-man army could have gone against Saddam Hussein and won the war. But did you notice when all the allies come together, they came into the unity, just like God is trying to do, unify the body of Christ. I don't care what denomination, who you are, it's got to come to unity. It's got to come to unity. But when those allies joined together, the enemy didn't even hardly get to fire a shot. They didn't even get a plane off the ground. Why? Because we win. We win. We've already won, but we have to enforce it. 
upon the earth. And God has to use us to enforce it. We are the policemen. We are the army. How does he do that? He has to use our body. He has to use our mouth. Do you understand? No, we're not going to put you on a street corner. <laughs> we're going to teach you how to pray. We're fighting a spiritual battle. <clears throat> Praise God. You've got to come to the grips that <clears throat> the enemy is not worried about the unsaved people. They're already serving him. He's already got them. Boom. You understand? That's just like the Iraqis in, in, in Iraq. They weren't, Saddam Hussein wasn't worried about him. They were already his people. You see? Okay. And, it, and the enemy is not worried about God either. Why? Because he knows he doesn't have to deal with him yet. He, he knows he has to, but not yet. So he says, well, that's over here somewhere. So who's he worried about? He worries about us. Why? We're the, his threat. We're the only thing that can, can, that can hamper his activities. He can't hurt us whatsoever. But, but, but he, uh, we hamper his, 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 uh, what he's trying to do. If we look at 1 Thessalonians uh, here, 1 Thessalonians um, chapter 2, beginning in verse 14, This is Paul talking to us. He stands for you, brethren. Who's the brethren? We are. We are the brethren who became followers of the churches of God. So he's talking to us and he's talking about us. He's talking about the New Testament church. He's talking about the, uh, the, uh, the brothers in Christ here. And he's saying, ye also have suffered. In other words, these brothers in Christ have also suffered just like Paul. Now listen to this in verse 15. And he says, he says, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their prophets and have persecuted us and they please not God and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved to fill up their sins always for the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. But we, brethren, being taken from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, endeavored the more abundantly to see your face with great desire. So first of all, here we got Paul talking to the brothers in Christ and he's saying, hey, looky here. He's saying, here's these uh, people, it looks like people, who killed the Lord. They killed their prophets. They killed the Lord Jesus. They persecuted us. They please not God. They are, are contrary to all men. They forbid us to speak to the Gentiles and they, that they might be saved. And they've taken me from you. Now, who does that sound like? Sounds like people, doesn't it? Huh? It sounds like he's talking about the Jews. Doesn't it? <clears throat> he dropped down, he says, Wherefore we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but, who sa uh, but Satan hindered us. Satan hindered him. So who did it? Who killed the Lord Jesus and their prophets? Who persecuted them and tries to persecute us and does not please God and are contrary to all men and he forbids us to speak to Gentiles that they might not be saved. Satan. Satan. You see? Now, Paul here is showing us who our true adversary is. It's not people. It is not people. It is a spiritual being. I know that sounds like Star Wars, doesn't it? My dear people, it's how it is. Hey, I didn't write this thing. I didn't write it. <coughs> well, so where did this individual or where did this being come from? Well, <coughs> if we look in Ezekiel chapter 28, Ezekiel 28, Beginning in verse 13, 
First of all, this scripture sounds like you're talking about the prince of Tyre until you get to verse 13. And in verse 13 it says, chapter 28, verse 13, Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardas, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, the gold, the workmanship of thy tabarets and thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. So here we have the word of God talking about a created being that was created by God. And first of all, he was in the Garden of Eden. All of us know about enough about the Bible that who was in the Garden of Eden? Adam, and Eve, and the serpent. He's not talking about Adam or Eve here. He's talking about the serpent. If you notice here in verse 13, he says, Thy tabrets were of the pipes <clears throat> that was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. So what we have here is Lucifer was an angelic um, archangel. There are actually three, ar there were three archangels, Michael, Gabriel, and uh, Lucifer. Lucifer fell with a third of the host or a third of the angels. Now, <clears throat> he was you notice here, thy tabrets and thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. He was head of the music, in other words. He was an anointed music uh, cherub. Anointed music cherub. Verse 14 says, Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so that thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. So Lucifer, or Satan, was the anointed music leader of a heavenly host. So what does he do today? Turn on MTV. That's what he does. He's taken the gift of God, brought it into the world, and he turns it loose on the young people and it pulls them and seduces them and sucks them in to the things of the enemy. Because they go from the music, then they get into drugs and they get into this and they get into that. True. You better believe it. <clears throat> Verse 15. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. In other words, he was created perfect in his image and everything until iniquity was found in him. <clears throat> drop down Verse 16. By the multitude of thy merchandise they have filled the midst of thee with violence. Thou hast sinned, therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty, and with pride entered in. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. So Satan was, was a created being. He was an archangel. He was a beautiful being. He, was, he was, uh, had the topaz and uh, diamonds and beryl and onyx encrusted all on him. And he was the leader of the heavenly host in, in music. And he was cast out of heaven. Now, <clears throat> let's look at Isaiah 14. Isaiah chapter 14, beginning in verse 12. Isaiah 14, verse 12. <clears throat> How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Talking about Lucifer here, talking about Satan. How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? Now, what does that mean, weaken the nations? If you'll notice, in the nations of the world, to this very day, the, the nations that followed the enemy. They're poor, they're starving, they're decrepit, you name it. You, go, you, you look at any nation on the world, the more God they got, the more prosperous they are, the more everything they are. Think about it. The more abundance they have, if you go look at a nation that, that, that serves and thinks a, like a cow or a what have you as their, their god, they got nothing to even eat. They're, they're poor, they're decrepit. They're, see? So he pulls the nations down that follow him. 
For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mouth of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high. What's he saying there? I will, I will, I will. He's got a rebellious spirit. He thinks he is it. He's going to do it his way. He knows, he thought he, he knows more than God. Uh, and, and he was going to take the throne from God and he's going to exalt himself above God and he's going to try to do it again in the temple. Verse 16, it says, They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble and did shake kingdoms? In other words, this individual, when we finally see him or when anyone finally sees him, they're going to say, is this the man that made the earth to tremble and did shake kingdoms because he is such a deceiver? He is such a deceiver. They're not going to believe it. This individual could do what he's going to do. You notice that Sarah, he said, is this the man? Is this the man? You see. <clears throat> Satan has to use a body. Do you understand? Okay. When you look at, pick up the newspaper and you see this where this little boy was shot with a gun or this little girl was raped or this store was held up, Satan used that individual's body. Does that mean they're possessed? No. Just like God uses a body. Okay. When pride entered into the enemy and iniquity was found in him, he was cast from heaven. <clears throat> where was he cast to? He, ca he was cast out of heaven to where? The earth. Oh, where we're at. <laughs> where we're at. Okay? And when he fell, he took one third of the angels of him, with him, and those angels today are his army. They are his army. One third of those angels were cast to heaven and they were his army. But praise God, they can't multiply. Only Christians can multiply. Only Christians can multiply. They can't multiply. So, <clears throat> when we look at Revelation chapter 12, Revelation chapter 12 beginning in verse 7, this talks about that particular war. And we see here... <clears throat> And there was in heaven Michael and his angels who fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. So here we have, there was a war in heaven, and Michael with his angels, who was an archangel, fought against the dragon, who was Satan. You'll see here in a minute. And so Michael and Satan, they had a big fight up in heaven. And it said, and they lost, or they, and prevailed not. In other words, Satan lost. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. So they were cast out of heaven permanently. Cast out of heaven permanently. Okay? But if you look at Matthew uh, 12, 28, we won't turn to it. The, the Word of God says, in Matthew 28, the Word of God says, <clears throat> if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. So where is the kingdom of God? There are no devils in heaven. It's here. And it's now. The kingdom of God is here. And it's now. And what, you say, well, what do you mean it's here now? That's right. It's a spiritual kingdom. It is a spiritual kingdom. And I'm going to open your eyes to it, to it in the next four or five weeks here. You'll see what I'm talking about. It'll be clear as a bell. Now... <clears throat>